as all of you know, especially Chad, uh, winning isn't easy. And uh, I think talked to the guys this morning, and I, I just reminded them of you know some of the things that have gone on as you watch a little bit of college football and the ultimate. You know, I, I said to him, I said, you know what the ultimate challenge is, right? And you know, it was a defensive group of guys, and they're kind of looking at me, and I just kind of gave them one of these, like right here. It's like just win, right? I mean, I think Al Davis said it best, right? Just win, baby, and, and you got to find ways to win. Um, so we've got to make sure that we enjoy that and, and we recognize that, and we've done that. We've done it in, in many different ways, but uh, finding ways to win is, you know, a little bit of what us looks like right now this year. Um, with that being said, we also know that we've got to develop some more consistency in, um, in all that we do. I think that, you know, as a team in general, uh, that's where, you know, as I pinpoint and say, okay, what, what do we got to do to continue to move forward, especially for a week like this? And, and consistency is a big deal. Um, you know, we've got a lot of self-inflicted, issues and that's not taking any credit away from the guys we played you know I think we you know had some issues you know on false starts again but don't you know take into consideration they did a really good job at some of the stem calls and you know um, movements on on probably half the snaps that they had and so there's some situations there we, we know that uh, those self-inflicted ones that we always talk about are the things that are in some ways holding us back and, and putting us in some situations that are you know draining challenging trying um you know and, and for us to grow uh, we've got to recognize that and we got to find ways to be able to make some of those things um not a you know kind of an achilles heel and something that's kind of holding us back and i mean just holding us back there's going to be things but it can get draining it can get that emotional drain um you know when, when those situations come up you know you, you get a pick to maybe kind of seal the game and you know you you know, got a PI or something, something connected to it that uh, just makes you have to go back and go again and again and again. And at some point in time, those things obviously catch up with you. Um, but with that being said, we found ways to win, and and I think that's where we've grown the most. Now it's going to be uniquely different this week. This is our first true challenge since week one to go on a road in a hostile environment and play a great football team. And I'm not saying take anything away. Like I said, from the teams we've played on the road, they haven't been hostile environment since week one. And this will be that. And uh, so it's another challenge for us. That's, you know, probably the, the thing that us looks like more than anything um, with this group is they've found ways to rise to the challenge of whatever whatever that takes. Red zone offense has run a little hot and cold in stretches, and UCF's red zone defense has, defense has been one of the best in the country. How do you find a little bit more consistency in that specific phase? Not sure if the answer that you're looking for. Are you trying to get it? Okay, all right. I, I, it, it still comes. Down, yeah, it, it still comes down to the things you, you got to do. The things you do really well. And um, I haven't looked exactly at the statistics of them red zone wise. I know that in the past we have been a very good red zone uh, offense and defense. We put a lot of time and effort. When we go camp, we go every third day in the red zone. Um, you know, sometimes you got to be able to adjust and adapt. And if it's not working as well, we didn't do a great job, obviously, this past week in the red zone. You know, we, we get a turnover in the second series, and we had the ball on the nine yard line, I think, to start the thing. And I, you know, we don't, I don't think we gain a yard and kick a field goal. Um, so there are some really positive things about that. We kicked five field goals, was for the first time, and I think in school history, and got a lot of confidence in our in our place kicker. But in order to win, in order to win on the road, and in order to win in a hostile environment, you're going to have to play great in the red zone. And I think twofold. I mean, we haven't done a great job in the red zone defensively, and that's something we've prided ourselves on and have been pretty good as well. So I think it's you know it's both. It's yeah, there's some consistency. There's some things you got to be able to do uh, based on the people that you got, and if you need to be a little bit more creative at times, we got to be a little bit more creative. You spoke about going down to Orlando is going to be a hostile environment similar to week one. Where does the UCF rivalry rank for you in this program? I mean, it, it's huge to me because if, you know, I, I kind of go back to, you know, always what starts it, right? And in and, and year one, it was, I'm not saying it was a bit of a rivalry, but all I remember is that game. And whether it was called because of the weather or it was called because of anything else, um, the reality is it was called and it wasn't a game. And so whether it's become a rivalry because, you know, they were the champs and then we ended up knocking them off a couple of years ago, you all rivalries are created differently. Um, but to me, any team that has beaten us, any team that has embarrassed us like they did in, in year one, that was something that will never, you know, never go away from me. So in my own mind, and my own heart, it's been a rivalry since then. Um, 
but I would say I've got quite a few of those with anybody that's, you know, that's beaten us, um, you know. But I, I do think, obviously, as, as everything moves forward, too, I think you're going to see that this one is going to stay. This one is going to be created, um, you know, and I think I think Chad might have a, a little bit of a hand in, in helping create that rivalry as he banters back and forth with people. And But you know what? That's how rivalries are created. The only thing that's different from maybe the rivalry I've grown up with is – you know, when you recruit against each other, that rivalry grows as well. So it's year round. We recruit a little bit against each other, um, but I don't know that it's like the home base for a lot of those things. But uh, I think that's where those they were created and they're started on the football field. They grow to some of this new age stuff, and then it's obviously when when it becomes a a recruiting rivalry at times too. It creates something throughout an entire year, and I think that's what's good for college football. They've got a quarterback who likes to run the ball as well. Do you feel better prepared for that, you know, considering who you've faced so far this year? Well, I no. I mean, it, it, he's just going to be uniquely different than anybody else, you know, probably that we face as far as a running quarterback. Um, it's great that we've seen, obviously, some of those situations. It's great that we've done well, and it's great that we've struggled a little bit because, you know, we got to figure out, you know, what's the best fit for us, um, you know. And they'll, they'll do some things a little bit different. They'll adjust some things, obviously, like they do because they're really good coaches and players. Um, but you know who the players are on their team. And the offense is going to run through him, whether he's running a football, he's scrambling around, or he's making things happen with his feet and his arm. Um, I think the entire first seven games, you know, help prepare you for whatever it is that you're going to see. Um, you know, it might be a little bit different. It might not be as many, you know, shots down the field that we had prepared for last week. Uh, but if you neglect to prepare for those things, that's where the some of their biggest plays have come as well. So um, I think the whole the whole – picture of it the entire year from what we faced in week one to this past week is what helps us grow and uh, be able to adapt and you know put a plan in place you talked about quarterback being obviously more highly scrutinized position you've talked about how ben has played how do you feel like he's handled some of that scrutiny or you know back to outside expectations again you know i, I don't see any change in ben you know i, I really don't I, I i can't tell you that he doesn't see and feel and hear but I, if people ask me what's the greatest attribute of, of Ben, I would say his maturity, his ability when, you know, he was mature when he walked in the door here five years ago. He, he was mature when he walked out of the door here a couple of years ago. And he was even more mature when he walked back in the door here. And, uh, you know, so I would expect that, you know, regardless of whether it's really positive or negative, that he's going to take it with a grain of salt. It's not that he doesn't see it. It's not that he doesn't hear it. But I, I know he's mature enough to be able to handle it. Um, and that, I say that because I have not seen whether it's been a demeanor, I haven't seen a body language, I haven't seen anything any different. And I complimented more than anything. Um, in my mind, I don't know if I said it after the game as well, is, is if you could watch a few drop balls and you know maybe really good catches, different things, where even in spring ball I could tell the difference when a kid dropped the ball and when he didn't. And, and sometimes the reaction or demeanor of Ben, and we had talked about that, I watched the entire game. I, I didn't see one difference in, you know, how he handled a guy that maybe caught a great ball or dropped a ball or something that should have happened that didn't happen. And I just say, you know what, he's he, he's continuing to grow. He was mature before. He's even more mature. He's handling this thing. And I would expect that he could handle all these outside opinions if needed um, the best way possible. The two or three weeks prior to this Saturday, UCF looked like they were gaining a lot of steam and building momentum and then obviously they had a rough one uh, at ECU is that kind of a perfect example of every Saturday you, you know, I, I do I think it is I think some people neglect to, to think that oh some went because our league or no that's not you know the, the league is you know you guys don't have to play as I mean the reality is you know there's a lot more parity in, in what it is we're seeing throughout the country I still would tell you that there's a probably a top six or eight you know that maybe are Talented, different than everybody else. Um, doesn't mean they can't be beat. But I think that there's so much more parity, you know, based on all that's going on um, in college football. So week in and week out is, is really critical. And whether people would say it's a trap game, whatever. Um, I know this, that, that uh, there's a lot of good football teams. We've got a lot of good football teams left. And a lot of teams play even better when, uh, when they're at home. And I think that's the thing I would say as much from what I've watched on film against for UCF is – they're a really, really, really good football team, and they're even a, a better football team when they're at home. 